such a tough equation in my it's head. A, it's a tough one. All right. Now, I think I'm at the stage now in my career where I take on clients where I, if I believe in their why, I'll do it. Yeah. If I don't believe in what they're doing, what they're trying to achieve, I won't do it. That's now, just such a good spot to be in. It, it feels good. Like I, before I'd be like, you get a big client board and you go, right, this is great. Yeah. But what I've also found with like the big client that comes aboard, whales will sink you. They'll come on board. They'll go, right, we put all this pressure on top of you and you've got to deliver. And you go, yeah, all right, this is money coming in and we're going to do this up. We're going to grow the agency. We're going to do blah, blah, blah. And then they go, all right, cool. We're going to the next person. And you go, right, we've <laughs> just expanded the entire agency. We have another 20 people working in your account, la la. And now yeah. we've got a massive client size, shape, hole that we need to fill. Yeah. And now I have to fire all these people. It's like, I'm sorry, I want to know, like, are you interested or are you committed? Yeah. Because if you're committed, like you're committed in the way that we're thinking, you're committed in a relationship, you're committed in the way that we're going to change the market over the long term. If you're just interested, you're going to come in for the short term thing. You'll be like, oh, yeah, we'll do the annual report, we'll do the video, we'll do the da. Yeah. And like it actually won't change anything for you. Yeah. The harder thing is, and this is the reality, is most businesses don't want to change anything. They just want to like yeah. keep going. In documentary, you see shit in the world that's fucking eye watering. Yeah. And you can't believe this is this injustice is allowed to happen. And what are you going to do? Like, you know, you can carry a sign, you can throw smoke bombs. Any deal in business is to be win win. Mm -hmm. Why are politicians not sitting down and going like, all right, let's make this a better world? which is why I think they got into politics, mm -hmm. and then go, let's do a business deal that's win, win, win across the board. Because it's never actually that way. And I'm trying to find a quote like in the very immediate context of being recorded right now. But there is a quote that goes on the lines of like, try and create debate within, the con within confines because people will like argue and debate about things, but like it's actually not solving the real problem. Like, the all-consuming mind is happy and docile. So, like, don't get people to think beyond what you have in front of them. Create the context for them to argue about it, and they'll be busy. So, what does that mean for people? Yeah, it means it means that then, and you can see this play out, and you're going to really see this play out in American politics because they just go, "The best thing is make it red or blue, Correct. and let them pick red or blue, and, and then discuss. Us. If yeah. it's better than blue, blue is better than red, and they will fight about that." But there's yeah. no one's ever thought about, oh, hang on, why oh, why are you thinking about red and blue? What about yellow? Yeah. There was actually- Is that the best two people America has? Fuck no. So, so there was an interesting experiment. And this is where I knew that I wanted to get into marketing. And this goes way back to the day. Like I think I was like 15 years old. And then we went to Murdoch University for an open day. And there was a group of PhD students and they were trying to- um, detect whether what you were saying was true or false. So they put like a headset on me and they had like little sensors trying to detect my brain activity and whether I was telling like a truth or a false. And they go, right, we want you to choose a color, all right? We don't want you to tell us what the color is, but every time we ask you, did you choose this color? We want you to say no. Although you know in the back of your mind what color you've chosen so they give me a set of colors to choose from. All right, so I guess. Is it is it is it <laughs> blue? Is it yellow? Is it red? Yeah. Is it X? Is it Y? Is it Z? And they went through this entire process and they go, was it this? And I go, no. Nah. Was it this? No. Nah. Was it this? This, this, that? No, 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 no. They go, what? You didn't choose any of the colors we gave you. And I go, yeah. They go, what did you choose? I was like, burgundy. And they go, that's not one of the colors that we gave you. And it's like, yeah, but why did I have to choose one of the colors that you gave, him, yeah. gave me? And they go, well, you ruined our experiment. And I go, <laughs> the experiment yeah, like, you're, 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 yeah, your experiment is flawed. Like, yeah. why do I have to choose from the set of choices that you gave me? Like, yeah. I can think beyond that. And even what I do now in my practice today, I go, like, decisions can only be assessed retroactively. Like, you can only go, right, well, the, dis the, the results of that decision yeah. ended in successful failure. Yeah. All right. But what's more valuable to people is actually finding out how you came to a successful decision. Yeah. So it's not about like, yeah, we made a good choice. It's like, well, what did we actually do to actually get that good choice? Uh, and can we do that more often than not? Because 
if we can't figure that out, then we're actually just making our decisions arbitrarily. Like yeah. they could be good or they could be bad. Like we just don't know. So figure out decision making as a process yeah. rather than an outcome. And that's kind of interesting. So, and, and now you think, and then we're talking about, you know, problems with the kids these days, they're hyper individualist, individualistic. Mm-hmm. They are completely focused on themselves. They are growing their own brands and stuff like we made that. And the reason is because of the trying to create um, red or blue situations, they went, this is fucking bullshit. Let's focus on myself. Yep. And then maybe if I grow, I can make a difference or whatever, you know, maybe just carve out this little bit of money. Mm-hmm. I got my money. I can buy a house in a world that can't afford houses. Mm-hmm. And I can pay off my hex debt in a world that never had a hex debt. Yeah. And, and I can do all of this because I focus on myself. And we created that mm-hmm. by creating bullshit situations where they know it's lose-lose. Yeah. And then they just focus on themselves. And now we're acting surprised about that. Correct. And like, you know, we never had a choice. We never had a choice. That's a problem. Like, yeah. we just accept the reality the way it's presented and we go, oh, God, I wish we could have done something. I got some weird teacher guilt and your sister will back me up on this, I think, because we, so when I go to schools, I look at kids and I go, fuck, sorry. <laughs> you know, like you, the world that we and my parents have made and all the generation. Uh-huh. YouTube was fucking phenomenal because that, well, that wasn't even around when I was in uni. I couldn't even leave, learn filmmaking off YouTube because which now we could say, don't go to uni, just watch all the YouTube tutorials. Yeah. Um, that that was created in, in my lifetime. And this kid that just can't stop staring at his phone and can't talk to his friends and has no friends because he just has been raised on a one-way street that is YouTube going in and nothing going out and he's yeah. carved no personality. Yeah. It's a guilt that a burden we're going to have to bear for the next 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I know baby boomers did that because Gulf Whitlam made it free university for Australian kids and free university. My dad did a year of engineering goes, I'm not a fucking engineer. And when did something else, you know? And meanwhile, everybody else is settled with intergenerational debt that's gone up seven, eight percent. And so, and, and got to pay that off before they can get a home loan and now can't get in a home loan and all this fucking shit that's gathered. But, but, that we are creating that for generations. So how, as a leader of industry, which I think you really, in this point of, this tiny part of the world, Fremantle, which is a really mm. cultural, impo- culturally important place, as a leader of industry, which you are, mm. how do we make the world a better place for this next generation and give them a fucking clear lane towards success? Yeah, I, it's a great question. And I think what it actually boils down to is giving people the ability to, think freely and to experiment without fear of judgment. So what I mean by that is we are so overly concerned about the judgment of others and the outcome of our react of of, our, of the results of whatever it is that we do that we actually fail to take the chance to do something that's actually revolutionary in the first stance. So we are so preconceived, like we have this preconceived notion of like trying to make sure that we never fail. Like you look at like the LinkedIn generation that we are stepping into now where we go, (laughs) right, we need to make sure that it looks like, yeah, we are getting validated by our friends and our peers and by the people in the industry to get vouched for like, yeah, I did this great thing and I caught up with a group of people on the weekend and we did this thing that didn't mean nothing at all. Like, that's the world that we live in, all right? But it means absolutely nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. So it's like, how are we going to take it back from that and go, right, you know what? I tried this thing on the weekend and it failed dismally because I tried to do this thing yeah. and it fucked up royally. And you know what? But as a result of that, I learned that this is the actual reality. Yeah. I've and never be, seen, being honest with that. I've never seen a LinkedIn post where you go, you know, <laughs> oh, I fucked up. I fucked up. <laughs> like, guys, I, I did this thing. I invested $50,000 into a marketing initiative. I, only, I, I put $500,000 into this thing. <laughs> yeah, I thought, and I got uh, fired. I because honestly I thought, thought, I thought <laughs> Melbourne was going to win by 40 points. Yeah, oh, they man, did. honestly, <laughs> like, far lap, I thought that this was going to come through. His heart exploded, like, on, on the fucking race track <laughs> but you go right no one's trying things all right because yeah. no one wants the no one wants the stigma of having they don't want to take the L. they don't take the l but also like take the l 
yeah. every single day of the week. If you aren't taking L's, man, you'll never yeah. get a W. Well, because you take a W, I learn, I mean, just from my own experience, I learned fuck all from a W. Man, if, I, if I take an L, I'm sitting there for like six months of self-evaluating, walking along the beach, crying tears into the wind, going like, where did I fuck up? And And that's where I've probably really went, you're a fucking idiot because you believe this and you should have yeah. believed that and now you learn. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll give you a quick story about the reality of the world, all right? And this is from the, <laughs> this is from the business owner's perspective. This is right? the one line that's going to define the reality of the world. Let's yeah, hear it. This one, <laughs> this one I heard, all right? So this is, a, this is a lesson for a lot of the kids out there. So one of the first jobs I got into was a, uh, I was a coder and I was working for a company, which I won't name, but I... I was building pretty much software for enterprise solutions and I I was working there whilst I was at university. So I was trying to get through my third year. I had accounting exams, da, da, da. And I'm like, oh, this is a part-time gig. I'm just trying to get through and trying to learn my craft, trying to get this together. Anyway, account manager comes to me and goes, Brett, we've got a whole lot of stuff to do. This guy has a launch to do. Like he's going to have a lot of like, big movers and shakers coming around. So you need to make sure that his web project is ready to go. And I go, all right, no worries. I'm going to do my best. But also, account manager, I need you to know I have an accounting exam like coming up in the middle of this thing. I don't know if I can make this, but I'm going to do everything I can. He goes, you need to make this happen. I go, I've got an accounting exam. Like I, this, I've spent three years at uni. This is my graduation. La, la la. I'm doing business marketing. He goes, just make it happen. I go, all right. So I'm working around the clock, studying, building this thing, studying, building this thing, studying, building this thing. Anyway, I guess the point. I go, all right. The his this guy's release is stable. He can get to his announcement, and the thing will. It's it's banned. It's and it's it's cotton wool it's there's so many things holding this platform together right now but it it should be enough just to hold and i'm doing just enough study to get through my accounting exam <laughs> all right send it live go to the next day go to the accounting exam can exam 49 percent ah failed all right anyway i go back to work the next week monday account manager comes up to see me and goes Right. Forty nine percent client was <laughs> client wants to see you in his office and I go, uh, all right. I go, all right. No worries. I go, any context? He goes, I don't know, man. He just he's not happy, but he wants to see you. And I go, okay, cool. Get to the front of his office. It's assistant, lovely girl. She goes, I'm so sorry, Brett. And I go, Okay. I step in the office and there's a chair in the middle of the room. She goes, he comes in and I walk in the room. He goes, take a seat. I'm like, in the only seat in the middle of the room, <laughs> take the seat. He goes up to his desk and he's looking out the window and he's got this stack of paper about you know, a couple inches high, grabs it from the table, turns around, throws it into my lap. I just pick this thing up and it's a printout of every single page of this website. And I look at it, I'm like, right, this is literally everything. He's taken the time to print out everything I've created. And like, it, it wasn't a small website. It was fucking, it was huge. He turns around and goes, you embarrassed me in front of my friends, my colleagues, my partners. This was my launch. Was it Russell Crowe that was telling this to you? He goes, this is Sparta. <laughs> Um, kicked me down into this chasm and I just fell. <laughs> but he turned around and oh, I just shattered immediately yeah. and he just goes, you embarrassed me. Yeah. You embarrassed me in front of people. He goes, you said this would be okay. This is not okay. And I look and I go, you know, fair enough. I'm looking at the things that he's circling. I'm like, yeah, they, was, these were the these were the Band-Aid fixes. These were the things I tried to do to couple it together to – to get it to a place in time. And I, looked at it, I was like, this is a lesson for me in terms of healthy boundaries, in terms of saying something is achievable, something is not achievable. This is yeah. like, this is okay, this is not okay. And if someone has something that's of, of grandiose importance, like you need to say straight up to them, like this is not going to fly for you. Yeah. But also like 
the importance of the thing. Was that like, a people pleasing streak that you had though? Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, for my 